Welcome to the channel, friends. So today's video is gonna be covering how big you should split your firewood. I'll go over their major determining factors and my take on it as well. So if this is gonna interest you, stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so welcome back. Here is my firewood bin inside the garage. Uh, I made this bin from scratch. It's made out of 10 gauge welded wire fencing, and it uh, holds a bin of firewood for me in the garage, which is very convenient because I can just come down here with my bag, fill it up and bring it up to the wood stoves. So as you can see, we have here a bunch of different sizes. I typically cut my wood from 16 uh, to 18 inches or so. So that feeds two different size wood stoves. I have a uh, Pacific Energy 1.9 cubic foot uh, Neo stove and also a 2.5 cubic foot Neo stove. So that's a wood stove with a secondary burn. You know, it's got that nice, you know, afterburner effect. It basically it's an incinerator and it burns the wood very efficiently and burns the gas coming off the wood as well. But that's a topic for another video. Uh, we're going to have a discussion about the size of the wood splits. The ultimate deciding factor when it comes to the size or length of your firewood is how big of a wood stove you have. That's really going to determine how big you should cut your wood. Uh, some people say you should cut it really big and have like big chunks like, you know, bigger than this one or bigger than that one there. Um, but the problem is with that, they're going to get heavy depending on who's carrying the wood up the stairs in your house or bringing it in from the outside. Uh, you can't just uh, cut the wood all very large and have big hunks of oak and big hunks of maple that weigh like, you know, 40, 50 pounds. You can't, you cannot, um, you know, kind of disadvantage someone else with that kind of issue. So you have to split the wood up to a manageable size to be carried as well. So it's a balance of being able to carry the firewood versus, you know, you want more BTUs, you want a bigger piece of wood. Obviously, burning these larger pieces of wood here are gonna burn longer and hotter uh, because they have more surface area, okay? Versus something like down to this size here, which is almost kindling. And this piece here, which is going to burn within like 20 minutes or so, um, once you get the stove really hot. So there's a fine balance between what you're willing to carry up the stairs. And like I said, it might not be just you. You could be very fit and be able to haul 100 pounds of wood in that bag. But um, your girlfriend, your wife, uh, your mother, your grandmother is not going to be able to do that. Okay, so you have to keep in mind, you have to keep the wood manageable size and weight for other people to carry it in the house. Um, I like to split the woods in all varying size. That way I have bigger pieces and also smaller pieces, almost down to kindling size, uh, mixed in my bin because it just makes life easier. Uh, it helps the fire get started quicker. Uh, the advantage of having a larger piece of wood like this is the fact that, that you can just leave that thing in there and it'll burn for like a couple hours and you don't have to really worry about it too much once you put two, three pieces in. So you never really want to put one piece of wood in your firewood stove. You always want to have two or three pieces of wood in there, varying size. That way it creates turbulence in the firebox, creating airflow and creating uh, more, just more heat. Um, it, it works better that way. You don't want just one kind of stagnant piece of wood uh, with you know, one flame kind of licking on it. Having more surface area is going to burn hotter and quicker. So with that being said, it becomes down to your wood stove size. Uh, depending on where you live in the world, uh, North America usually has bigger wood stoves uh, compared to, say, Europe, which they have, they burn smaller stuff. You know, pe there's some people in, in Europe that this is all they burn. They burn like little pieces of kindling and twigs and stuff. Honestly, if you if you look at their kind of the way of living, they have multiple small wood stoves in their house and they're burning this type of stuff. And honestly, I wouldn't want to burn small stuff like that, okay? Because you're going to be constantly feeding your stove every hour. I don't know how they do it, but um, 
some stoves like the yodel stoves where the firebox is like vertical versus like horizontal like most stoves you see in north america and canada you'll have a ver you know a horizontal rectangular firebox uh, there's some wood stoves out there that are vertical so you stack these pieces of wood vertically in there as if you were having a fire okay like teepee style or in a triangular format so depending on the stove that you have and its size is going to ultimately determine the size of your firewood now as you can see here there's some different pieces of firewood most of them being naked wood which means there's no bark on them so these were split to expose the fibers on the wood just like you see here these all have exposed faces that are all fibrous this side here has no bark so that's going to burn faster when you first put it in the wood stove versus something like this. This still has all the bark on it. Bark, if you don't know, does not burn very efficiently. It, it starts smoking. You know, it, it's not really, it's almost like the callus of the wood. That's why uh, there is bark because it's, it protects the wood from the elements in, in the climate that they're in or predators or insects or whatever it may be. So burning a piece of wood with bark on it it will burn obviously uh, eventually but it's not going to burn as quick as a piece of wood like this or a piece of wood like this that has these nice little kind of feathery fibers coming off of it this is going to burn extremely quick the smaller a piece you have and the more pieces in there the hotter and quicker the fire is going to burn okay so if you have a bunch of these in there that you stack the whole wood stove up save a big really big wood stove and you just put a bunch of these in there that's going to light up really quick and get really hot quickly because you're going to get a lot of airflow because there's a lot of surface area, a lot of turbulence in the firebox, and it's just going to light up. Okay. And then, you know, typically you want to toss in a larger piece to keep it going, and then you graduate to a larger piece to have a more sustaining fire for hours. You, you know, you put one of these in there and a, and a couple of these, and then you'll have a good a mass of wood burning uh, for a few hours so it'll, it'll be taken care of and it'll start putting out some good you know strong radiant heat um, and it's not just the amount of wood you have in your wood stove it's the amount of coals that also give the heat output so you want to get a good bed of coals going in your in your firebox before uh, you start really piling on too much wood um, you want to make sure those coals are getting a lot of air and getting moved forward in the firebox so those are my kind of you know key points when it comes to what size you should cut your firewood ultimately it's up to you what do you want to carry and how big your firebox is in your wood stove and how many different stoves do you have most people only have one i have two so i have to consider multiple sizes uh, in my firewood bin here in the garage I want to keep a good variety of firewood to feed both. I don't want to be going out there and having to collect larger pieces versus smaller pieces and vice versa. So that's very handy, you know, having a mixture of kindling and smaller pieces in your, in your firewood collection. So. All right. So there are my thoughts on this topic and I hope you guys will take away something and provide it useful. Uh, I do have other videos as well on this uh, DR wood splitter and kind of a series that is kind of developing on it. Uh, part one was simple upgrades to do to the machine, specific to this type of machine. Uh, part two was uh, the fabrication of these table wings that I made myself, which enhanced the work surface and give me more space in the left and right of the machine. Part three was maintenance and lubrication of the machine and just preventive stuff that needs to be done uh, yearly or every couple years. And part four is 10 tricks and tips on operating a kinetic type wood splitter such as this is. So this might be part five. Um, I will have more parts coming to this. I want to do a slow motion video of uh, the mechanism and the flywheel operating and me splitting wood. All in slow motion so that should be very interesting and, and a fun video to watch so i hope you guys have a nice day and happy splitting
Well guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions or comments, please place them right down below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next video.